August 26, 2015 was a normal day for most of the world, but to the GD community it is a day that will change Dash forever, as on that day Update 2.0 was released and subsequently ushered in a new era for Geometry Dash. The countless new game changing features it brought in like invisible objects, infinite colors and layers were all highly notable additions, although there was one new feature that rose above the rest, the ability to add movement to objects. It would prove to change levels forever as it enabled custom backgrounds, more advanced gameplay, animations and all the like, though one of the most intriguing things it made possible was boss fights. Boss fights are a very unique part of GD levels as they change how gameplay and decoration work quite drastically. Instead of the usual GD action of objects just wishing by, elements stay on the screen for much longer and are often close to stationary. Sight reading is changed by not just having to look where there's empty space to go, but also having to check where the boss's attacks are being indicated to appear next. Decoration gets a lot more attention to detail to it, especially for the boss's design as it will stay on the screen for a long time and will often be what people focus their eyes on, so creators often give it a lot of effort to make it as interesting and as worth of catching the player's eyes as possible. Even though boss fights can be really interesting and can add a lot of touch to an otherwise boring level, there is a high necessity to be very careful with how and when you implement them. A good boss fight should be well integrated into a level and serve a purpose for being there. For shadowing the boss before the fight, for example with having the boss appear in the background of previous parts, is an important factor in making the boss feel like it belongs in the level. The boss fight should also result in some lasting effects in the level itself, for example the style changing, the player's game mode changing, the boss dying, etc. If a boss just appears at a random part, shoots lasers a bit and then leaves forever without doing really anything substantial, then it's as good as not having a boss fight in there at all. Although boss fights were introduced over 4 years ago now, the fundamental concept of boss fights in GD has pretty much always stayed the same. There is the player on the left, with the boss on the right shooting obstacles to the left. This has been the most common way to make boss fights throughout the community's history and it has been stepped away from very rarely. And it's popular for a good reason, the player's icons have always been locked to the left side of the screen, so if the boss was behind the player, it would have to be squished against the edge of the screen and there won't be much time to react to attacks. So it makes much more sense to put the boss on the right side, which is far emptier, enabling bigger and better bosses. Though, as I stated, there have been a few times where this formula has been broken, the most notable one being Horizon by Motu, which features the boss in the center of the screen, shooting lasers in all directions. This has been the second most common approach to make boss fights, although it is far, far overshadowed by the standard. Though, it's been used in levels like Horizon Zero and Titanium Buster, and to great effect too. Ignoring design, there are three main qualities for a good boss fight. Readability, variety and fluidity. Readability is how easy it is to sight read the boss fight. Basically, it's not a very fun boss fight to play if you suddenly get gaster blasted in the face with no warning. There should always be someone to tell what, when and where an attack is coming up. While well, this can be easily done by just adding arrows, pointing where you should go, let's be honest, that's as creative as dedicating your level to Rob Top. You can have arrows, but it's pretty much always best that the boss also has some indications of what it's doing. Variety is how varied the boss's attacks are. If a boss just shoots lasers at you, it's going to get pretty boring fast. A boss should have variety in its attacks, maybe along with lasers it could also shoot some missiles, and maybe fireballs. If you want a really big attack, it could even throw C1997's ego at you. 
Of course, there is a fine balance between too little variety and too much. If you have only two attacks, that's a pretty boring boss, while if basically no attacks are repeated, you can know what's coming up and the boss is really hard to sight read. Fluidity is a word that might have left some of you confused at first, but basically it has to do with how the boss moves. If the boss just stands in place and shoots, even with epic design, it's going to be a pretty dull boss. An interesting boss should move around constantly, not too much that it makes it hard to tell what it's doing, but it shouldn't just stand still. A good example of this is Against the God by 1374, in which both of the bosses move around very fluently, giving the fight a much needed sense of liveliness, while still being quite easy to sight read and varied. Though fluidity is not just about how the boss moves when it's idle, but it's also about how the boss moves when it attacks. As I mentioned before, a boss's design is the most important design factor, since people tend to focus on the boss's design a lot when seeing the level. There are a lot of factors that go into making a good boss, though priority number one would be how well the idea of the boss is executed. For example, a dragon boss should have a dragon-like design and a robot should look like a robot. The boss also has to fit its surroundings so that it doesn't look out of place, but it must also be easily distinguishable to make it easy to sight read. Fluidity also applies to design as adding organic parts to your boss can really flesh it out. So now that we have the qualities of a good boss fight defined, let's look at some examples of boss fights in practice. Mr. Pumpkin by Flaco GD is a level that was released around a year ago and one that pretty much everyone has forgotten, but it has a boss fight in it that has some interesting points to analyze. Now, there are good qualities to the boss. It looks really cool, the movements are nice and it fits the level. But the main issue with this boss fight is that it's actually more entertaining to browse r slash not interesting than to play it. The boss has very smooth movement at least, but only when it moves at all. It just flips its arms and head around, shooting attacks at a rate that would make even Robtop's update frequency seem rapid. It also has only three attacks, these walking pumpkin things, this exploding pumpkin and these bats. Overall, it's a boss fight that has good design and fluidity, but lacks all notion of the word epic, along with being hard to sight read. And another level that can provide some insight on how to not do a boss is Bang Gang by Danzman. Now, the boss in this level in itself is actually pretty good. It has very fluid and interesting movement, and while it mostly just shoots lasers, it does have other attacks supplementing it. But the problem with this boss fight is that... Why is it there? The level itself is one that Dan has made for the gang to play during their meetup. And that is actually a really interesting idea, as it provides some interesting challenges as to how you can make a level work with 4 players. And I'd also say that Dan's executed upon that idea really well, as the level has a lot of duels that also have short auto ports in between, giving the players time to switch roles. Interesting concepts like that are something that I personally love and support completely, but a boss fight just isn't something that would be a natural result of that. The boss fight also doesn't do anything for the level itself, it just appears in the last quarter and then the level ends without anything happening to it. Now, the thing is that Bang Gang is a spin-off for Slap Squad and another level by Dancemen which also features a boss fight, so you could justify Bang Gang having a boss fight with that. But why does Slap Squad have a boss fight though? It isn't foreshadowed in the level and it doesn't have any effect on the level. It's purely a boss fight for boss fight's sake. And like I said before, if the boss doesn't have anything to do with the rest of the level, then that's as good as not having a boss fight there in the first place. Ouroboros by Moor and Viprin is the most recent addition to Geostormer's lineup of legendary demons and it is by far their best work. Not once in my life have I seen theming, design and gameplay mashed together this well in a mega collab. While there are solo levels that I'd still hold above it, like in Silico and Space Magic, it's very safe to say that Ouroboros is the greatest mega collab ever created. But that is a topic for another video, as here I will be focusing on the boss fight that takes place in the last 20% of the level. 
Now this boss fight is a pretty solid one to say the least. It looks really smooth, it has a lot of attacks, great design and it has a very good reason to be there as the level is themed after the boss. It is what the level has been building up for. But the problem with it is that it lacks a bit in the epic factor. First off, the boss doesn't move too much. It just moves to a position to shoot like it should but it lacks idle movement. It's also not that long. As I said, it's meant to be the epic final fight, so the fact that it's over in under 10 seconds is selling it kinda short. But as I said, overall it's a very good boss fight. It just needs a bit of additional touches to polish it up. So what will the boss fight look like if it had those polishes? Against the God by 1374 is a level I've talked about before in my favorite Demons of 2.1 video, and for a good reason, it is absolutely breathtaking. Now, I'd say that it's pretty hard to get my chart to drop from just GD levels. I'm intrigued by a lot of stuff, but outright amazement is quite rare, at least for me. That is far from the case with this level though, as the first time I saw this, I was genuinely rendered speechless. The level has two bosses, both of which are absolutely amazing and have their own qualities. The first boss, Mandara the Guardian, has a lot more action to it. The boss moves around the screen, attacking the player from all sides. I really love how the boss is layered and how each layer follows the next one a bit later, making the boss move so damn smoothly. This boss also is a lot more open and bright, and serves as a great introduction to how the level handles boss fights. The second boss though, Goldwing the Divine Dragon, is the one that made my face go properly O underscore O. The design of the boss is absolutely amazing, and the boss fight itself is really something. The boss doesn't have a lot of attacks, but the ones that it does are done really well, and while it has the same problem as Mr. Pumpkin with it shooting unfrequently, it supplements that really well with amazing subtle idol animation. Even if the boss isn't currently attacking, it's always subtly moving to prepare for the next one. There are also tons of subtle details to this, for example the boss actually blinks and follows a highly realistic path of movement. There's no doubt, this level is a definite masterpiece. Back when I mentioned Against the God in my favorite Demons video, I stated that it was in my opinion the greatest boss fight level of all time. But as that video is already 9 months old and we're still in the same update, holy fuck we're still in the same update, my mind has actually changed. Some of you have probably already started wondering about the fact that I have yet to mention a certain creator who has recently risen up as one of the best boss fight creators of all time, Zender Game. Five minutes, five bosses, the conclusion to Zender Games boss fight series. And man, what a conclusion it is. All of the bosses have amazing design, varied attacks, insane fluidity, and with the help of arrows the level is also very sight readable and quite fun to play. The level features a lot of references to the earlier parts in the series, but it also works magnificently as a standalone. This is the definition of epic. The bosses all have fast and energetic fights for all the while being really smooth and well designed. My personal favorite being this one simply due to its breathtaking design and rapid gameplay. And all of this contained in a 5 minute long design and gameplay masterpiece. While it didn't make my jaw drop as much as against the god as it doesn't really show anything I haven't seen before, it's still a great level as it is very well polished. The S Katana and against the god are both amazing examples of how to do a boss fight right, all the while still displaying the diversity that is possible, with the S Katana being way more energetic and against the god having better build up and payoff. Where are boss fights headed towards in the future? As I said, Against the God and his Katon are already masterpieces and topping them will be quite a challenge, although I believe that it is still possible. 
One aspect I'd like to see explored more is the reason as to why are we fighting these bosses. Instead of us fighting this boss because that's what we do, maybe there could be some motivation in the level itself for the player to beat the boss. Another one that needs attention is payoff. Although since boss fights are often the final climax of a level, I understand that it's kinda hard to display the effects defeating the boss has on the level when the level just ended. But I think that this could still be explored, so as a final note for this video, let's go through a potential idea for a boss fight level that could, if executed properly, be one of the best out there. Assuming that we can't use multiple levels to build it up, here's what I came up with. Begin the level by establishing that the player comes from a village of GD cubes. It should be shown that the player cares a lot about this village so that we can have the boss introduced by destroying the village. This would set up a motivation for us to go fight the boss for revenge, which would set the player up to start the actual gameplay of the level. This should be done with something like landscape art and block design as I don't think a traditional design level would fit this. It would have to be the same way as in silico or space magic with it looking like the player is actually adventuring through the world. Then after a good while of gameplay we have a fight with the boss. It should be simple-ish while still being interesting and it would end in the player unable to defeat the boss. The player would be beaten up, unable to avenge his village. But then, remembering all their friends, they would gain the motivation to rise up, go to the boss's castle and fight them for an epic final fight that would end in the boss being killed. Then the level should conclude with an auto gameplay outro where the player returns to the village, the level concluding with them having learned to be stronger and not give up. This is not the best story possible, there are far more interesting ones you could do if you had more levels to work with, but it should display what I mean. The level has a story, it has a beginning, middle, climax and end. That's really the key factor I think could spice up GD boss fights, introduce stories to levels. Better yet, you could try doing a full level series with this, with an overarching story that develops throughout and concludes in a way that no GD series has done before. I'm not saying that this hasn't been attempted before, Xander Games boss fight series is a good example of that, but the story in that is kinda hard to tell. I heard them talk about the war and I talked to Xander Game himself and he also admitted that from the levels itself, it's really hard to see. The idea is there, it just needs to be presented more clearly. And when you have that sorted out, you can start doing something that no one else has done in GD. Just how epic will that be? So, I want to talk about a few things. First off, as you can probably tell, this is basically a spiritual continuation of my theming in GD levels video, and this is a series that I've been planning on doing for a while now, analyzing different aspects of GD levels. I'd like to clarify one thing right now though, I am not at all saying that what I talk about in this video is the only way to make good GD levels. This is not a tutorial. The purpose of these videos is to try to further artistic innovation in the GD community. As I've stated before, I consider GD levels to be a legitimately viable art form, just like books and movies, and that's the point of view I'm writing these videos from. Though it is completely okay and I encourage you to make themeless levels without any big narratives or ideas behind them. This is a 2D square jumping game aimed at kids after all, it's meant to be entertainment, it's not a high school philosophy class. I'm just saying that alongside that entertaining side, you could also try exploring a bit of that artistic side as well. And with that, see ya!